Hello children. In this video, we will learn about the use of tally marks. Today, a unique fancy dress contest is going to be held in Champapur. Chanda, Babban, Sher Khan, Gaggu and Bhola have participated in the competition. Look, the competition has started. All the contestants are coming on stage one after the other. The contest is over. Badbole uncle, the host of the competition, told the audience, The names of all the contestants have been written on the board placed near the stage. You can vote for the contestant whose costume you liked the most. Draw a vertical line like this for the first vote. For the second vote, create a horizontal line in this way. For the third vote, a vertical line like this. And for the fourth vote, once again a horizontal line. And for the fifth vote, we will make a diagonal line like this to form a group of tally marks and then for further votes we will repeat this process and make groups of tally marks at the end of the day whoever gets the most votes will be the winner of this contest the day is over and all the viewers have casted their votes now Uncle started counting the tally marks written on the board. Let's see which contestant has got how many votes. Let us see how many votes Gaggu has received. How many groups of tally marks are there? Yes, there is only one group of tally marks and three lines. This means Gaggu has got five and three. Eight votes. Children, can you tell us how many votes Babban has got? Yes, absolutely right. There are two groups of tally marks and two lines in front of Babban's name. This means Babban has got 12 votes. Children, can you tell how many more votes has Sher Khan received than Babban? Sher Khan's votes consist of three groups of tally marks and one line. Sher Khan has got three times five, fifteen, plus one, sixteen votes. And Babban has got twelve votes. This means Sher Khan has got four votes more than Babban. Now, can you tell how many more votes has Chanda got than Sher Khan? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. Yes, Chanda has received 19 votes and Sher Khan has got 16 votes. This means Chanda got 3 more votes than Sher Khan. Barbole uncle too, like you, counted the votes and announced the winner of the contest. Children, can you tell who won the contest by getting the most votes? Absolutely right! Chanda with the maximum votes, 19 votes, won the contest. Barbole uncle gave Chanda the trophy and the audience started clapping and cheering loudly. Children, in this video, we learned about the use of tally marks. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children, in the previous video, we learned about the use of tally marks. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. 
Champapur is experiencing heavy rains. Roads have got damaged in many places. Children are unable to go to school due to the road leading to the school getting damaged. The Panchayat has decided that all the villagers together will help in repairing the roads. You are requested to extend your help in this work. On behalf of Champapur News, I am Bappan Reporter with Cameraman Bunny sending this live news to you. Keep watching Champapur News. Bablu and Raju saw this news on TV. Come Bablu, let us also help the villagers. Raju told Bablu. When Raju and Bablu reached there to help them repair the road, they saw that uncle had drawn such a table on a board. It will take us a total of 48 hours to fix the road. Every day, at the end of the day, I will record the number of hours we worked for that day by making tally marks in this table. Uncle told the villagers there. One week got over and all the villagers worked hard and got the road fixed. All the villagers are eager to know on which day the most work was done. Children, can you look at this table and tell on which day the villagers have done the most work? If you wish to, you can find the solution by stopping the video. First, we will count the tally marks of the work done every day and write the number in this way. The maximum work, 12 hours of work was done on Monday. Hey, Bablu, look, by the end of this day, we had completed more than half of the total hours. Raju told Bablu. Children, can you tell which day is Raju talking about? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. The villagers had to work together for 48 hours. Half of 48 is 24. Therefore, to find a solution to this question, we first have to find the total of the hours of work completed by the end of each day. Then, we have to find out by the end of which day was more than 24 hours of work completed. 12 hours of work was completed by the end of Monday. By the end of Tuesday, 12 plus 7. 19 hours of work was completed. By the end of Wednesday, 19 plus 9. 28 hours of work was completed. Since 28 is more than 24, by the end of Wednesday, more than half of the total hours of work had been completed. This means the day Raju is talking about is Wednesday. Yes, Raju. And look, on this day, four more hours of work were completed than this day. Bablu told Raju. Children, can you tell which two days is Bablu talking about? To find a solution to this question, we have to find two days in which the difference between the hours of work completed is 4. If we look closely, we will find that 7 hours of work were completed on Tuesday and 11 hours on Thursday, which is 4 more than 7. So, Bablu is talking about Tuesday and Thursday. Raju, we worked so hard and finally got the road to the school fixed. Yes, Bablu, I agree. There is a lot of strength and unity. Let us go home and prepare to go to school tomorrow. All the villagers happily returned to their respective homes. Children, 
In this video, we learned more about the use of tally marks through some interesting examples. In this video, we will learn about bar charts. Bunny started spending a lot of money every month, due to which, by the end of the month, all his money would be over. Let me start this new year by saving. Every month, I will save some money. Thinking this, Bunny started saving money every month. He would put the money saved in each month in a piggy bank and then write the amount saved in that month in such a table in a notebook. In no time, six months passed by. Oh wow! I have been saving money for six months. Now I must have accumulated a lot of money. Just then, Bhola came to his house. Bunny told him how he had been saving money every month for the past six months. Oh wow, Bunny! This is a very good thing. So, do you now know in which month you saved the least money? No. How can I find that out, Bhola? You can find it easily by creating a bar chart, Bunny. Bar chart? What is that? Bar charts are a way of displaying information. Let me teach you how to make it. Bhola drew a vertical line and a horizontal line like this on a paper. Then he wrote the names of the six months on the horizontal line in this way. Then, in order to determine the interval between the two numbers on the vertical line or the scale of the chart, he found the largest number in Bunny's table, 30. So, he wrote down the numbers from 1 to 30 equally spaced on the vertical line. Bunny, can you look in your table and tell me how much money you saved in the month of January? 20 rupees. Bhola now made a thin rectangle over the month of January whose length was going up to the number 20 written on the vertical line. Look, Bunny, we have to make thin rectangles in this way on the horizontal line for the amount saved in each month whose length will be the same as the amount saved in that month. And because these rectangles look like bars, hence we call this chart a bar chart. Oh wow! This is very interesting. Now I will make a rectangle with a height reaching number 18 in this way for the amount saved in February. Bunny and Bhola together made rectangles in this way for all months. Bunny, look! Our bar chart is ready. Here, the height of each bar shows you the amount saved in that month. And as you can see, the bars in the bar chart are rectangles of exactly the same width and the space between them is also equal. On the vertical line, I have written equally spaced numbers from 1 to 30 to show the amount you have saved. And on the horizontal line, I have written the names of the months. Now, can you tell me in which month you have saved the least amount of money? Absolutely, Bhola. 
Now it has become very easy. The month of May has the smallest rectangle, which means I saved the least money, 16 rupees, in the month of May. And look, the month of April has the longest rectangle. That means I save the most money, 30 rupees, in the month of April. Well done, bunny. You learnt very quickly. Now, just like this, you continue saving money so that by the end of the year, you can accumulate a lot of money. Bunny promised Bhola that he would continue to save money. Children, in this video, we learned about bar charts. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children, in this video, we will learn about the pie chart. Chanda and Apu want to start a pickle making business together. Chanda, I think we should first find out which pickles people like. Yes, Apu. Let's find out by asking the villagers. I will write down the names of some pickles on a paper. Then we will write the number of people who like that pickle in this table. Chanda and Apu go to people's homes to find out which pickle people like. By the end of the day, they completed their table by asking a hundred people their choice. They returned to Chanda's house. Apu, I am tired of wandering around the village all day long. And now, I don't understand anything after seeing so many numbers. Is there any way that we can understand all this information at one glance? Yes, Chanda, we can illustrate this information using a pie chart. Hey, Apu, I'm already feeling very hungry and now you're increasing my appetite by taking the name of this pie chart. What is this pie chart? <laughs> Through the pie chart, we can illustrate the information in a simple way by making a circle. Let me teach you how to make it. See, we have got information of a hundred people in total. To make a pie chart, we will first write the number of people who like pickle as a fraction of hundred. Like, 50 people like mango pickle. So, we take the number of people who like mango pickle as 50 or half part of 100. In the same way, we will write different pickles liked by people as fractions of 100. But the total number of parts in all these fractions is different. Then how do we represent them? That's correct. To solve this, we will first find the lowest common multiple or the smallest common multiple of the total parts of all these fractions. In this way, 20 is the lowest common multiple of these numbers. Now, we will write all these fractions in such a way that the total parts of all of these fractions is 20. But Apu, you haven't made any pie till now. Don't worry. Now we are going to make the pie of the pie chart. Now we will make such a circle. Then we will divide this circle into 20 equal parts. And finally we will color these parts of the pie chart as per the fractions and illustrate it using the circle. Our pie chart is ready. Wow Apu, 
Now we can easily find out by looking at these parts that people like mango pickle the most because the largest part of the pie chart shows the number of people who like mango and this smallest part shows the people who like pepper pickle so people who like pepper pickle are of the least number and look appu similar number of people like amla and carrot pickle that means those who like these pickles are same in number that's right we have to start selling mango pickle first let us eat something now i'm very hungry too appu and chanda now went to eat chapatis children in this video we learned about the pie chart in the next video we will learn more about it by some interesting examples hello children in the last video we learned about the pie chart in this video we will learn more about it by some interesting examples raju mrs khan has told me that all the children have to wear the same color shirt for the school's annual festival she has asked me to find out which color is most liked by the children come i will help you we will ask all the children to choose the color that they like then we will make a chart of this information and we will know which color is most liked by the children raju and bablu asked 48 children about their color choice and made such a pie chart look raju after seeing this pie chart it seems that the largest number of children like yellow this is one third of this pie chart but how do we know how many children like this color look bablu we have created this pie chart with the information from 48 children and one third of these children have liked yellow so the number of children who like yellow will be 48 multiplied by one third or 48 divided by 3 that is 16 children a total of 16 children like yellow oh wow raju this is so easy and look these parts show that the number of children who like the color green and pink are very similar it means that the same number of kids have liked pink and green let me immediately find how many children have liked the colors green and pink this part is 1/6 of the pie chart this means green and pink color is 48 multiplied by 1/6 or 48 divided by 6 that is 8 children that means 8 children like green and 8 like pink bablu the share of children who like red is also quite large but it is a little smaller than the share of children who like yellow let's find out the number of children who like red more than yellow the number of children who like red will be 48 times 1/4 or 48 divided by 4 which is 12 children yellow color is liked by 16 children this means that the number of children who like red is 4 less than the number of children who like yellow and raju i like blue color a lot but in this pie chart the share of children who like blue is the smallest let me find out how many children like blue like me the number of children who like blue is 48 times 1 by 12 or 48 divided by 12 that is 4 Out of whom I am one. <laughs> Bablu, uh, let's quickly tell Mrs. Khan that most of the children like yellow color. Raju and Bablu conveyed this to Mrs. Khan, and then 
all the children celebrated the annual festival with great enthusiasm by wearing yellow shirts. Children, in this video, we learned more about the pie chart by some interesting examples. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes related to this. Children, in the previous video, we learnt more about the pie chart by some interesting examples. In this video, we will see some common mistakes related to this. With the wedding season in Champapur, Chanda is getting lot of orders to decorate the wedding pavilion with flowers. Chanda is wondering which of her flowers people like the most. To find out, Chanda created a pie chart by looking at the record of flowers used in previous orders. Just then, Appu came to Chanda's shop. Chanda, what is this pie chart you made? This shows the popularity of my flowers. I have made this pie chart from the information about how many flowers I have used the various orders. According to this, the largest part is the champa flowers. It means champa flowers are the most popular flowers. See, I have also learned to make pie charts. Oh wow, Chanda, you have made a very beautiful pie chart. But what's this? Champa flowers have been used in one fourth orders, and rose flowers have been used in one third orders, and one fourth is smaller than one third. But in your pie chart, one fourth part of the champa flowers appear larger than one third part of the rose flowers. How can this be possible? Oh yes, Apu. When I made this pie chart, I counted properly, and I had counted each flower and then colored in the parts of the pie. Then, how did this happen? Okay, now I understand. Look, Chanda. Even though you have colored the parts of the pie chart according to the fractions of these flowers, but when you made the parts of the pie chart, you have created unequal parts instead of the equal parts. So, one third of your pie chart seems smaller than the quarter of your pie chart. Oops! <laughs> I so I made this mistake. Uh, I, it means that rose is the most popular flower and not champa. Let me rectify my mistake and make this pie chart properly. By saying this, Chanda divided the pie chart into equal parts and made it without any mistake. Thank you, Appu. Now I will never repeat this mistake. For this help, Allow me to buy an ice cream for you from Babban's ice cream stall. Both Chanda and Appu went to eat ice cream. Children, in this video we saw some common mistakes related to the pie chart. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned about bar charts. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. The exam is over and summer vacation is about to begin. But before that comes an important day, result day. Today, all the children have come to school to get their report cards. Look Raju, I got such good marks. I too have got very good marks, Bablu. Is that so? Why don't we make bar charts of our marks? That way, we will be able to compare our marks at a glance. 
Raju and Bablu made bar charts of the marks they scored. Children, by looking at the bar chart of Raju and Bablu, can you tell which subjects have Raju and Bablu got the highest marks in? If you wish to, you may find the solution by stopping the video. The highest rectangle in Raju's bar chart is in mathematics. So, Raju has scored the highest marks as 19 marks. And the highest rectangle in Bablu's bar chart is in science. So, Bablu has the highest marks as 18 marks. Look Raju, I have got 5 marks more than you in this subject. And in this subject, you have got 5 marks more than me. Children, can you tell us which subjects is Bablu talking about? If we look closely, in geography, Bablu has got 17 marks and Raju has got 12 marks. So, in geography, Bablu has got 5 marks more than Raju. And in English, Bablu has got 12 marks and Raju has got 17 marks. So, in English, Bablu got 5 marks less than Raju. Look Raju, your marks in this subject are the least among the marks we both got. Children, can you tell in which subject has Raju got the least marks? The height of the rectangle made in science in Raju's bar chart is the smallest among all of the bars in Raju and Bablu's bar charts. Hence, the lowest of all marks, 10 marks, are scored by Raju in science. Raju, I will help you in science from now on and you can help me in English. For now, let us go and enjoy our holidays. Children, in this video, we learned more about bar charts through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes related to this. In the previous video, we learned more about bar charts through some interesting examples. In this video, we will see some common mistakes related to this. Golu and Chanda bought balloons from the market for Bhola's birthday. Golu, my packet contains red, green, blue and yellow balloons. And your packet contains black, white, pink and purple balloons. You make a table of numbers of the various balloons in your packet. And I will make a table of the numbers of the balloons in my packet. In this way, we will get information about the numbers of the balloons and we will be able to make a beautiful pattern with these balloons for Bola's birthday. Both Golu and Chanda made such tables by counting the balloons in their packets. Chanda, there are so many numbers here. My head is spinning looking at it. Can we do this in some other simple way? Yes, we can show this information in a very simple way by making bar charts. That would be nice. Let us both make bar charts from our respective tables. Chanda quickly created her bar chart in this way. But Golu is immersed after making an incomplete bar chart. 
What happened, Gulu? What are you thinking? I have made half the bar chart, but the number of these white balloons is 70. And on my paper, I can write numbers only up to 23 on this vertical line. Now, how do I show the number of these white balloons in this bar chart? <laughs> Such a small thing. By the way, Kulu, you have chosen the wrong scale when creating the bar chart. Whenever we want to create a bar chart, we must first find the largest number in that information. Like, the largest in your table is 70. Now, you have written the equally spaced numbers from 1 to 23 here. So, you will not be able to show 70 on this scale. But, if we write multiples of 5 equally spaced on this scale, then you can easily show 70 on this scale. But Chamba, the number of black balloons here is 23. And 23 is not a multiple of 5. So how can we show 23 on this bar chart? There is a very easy solution for this too. We have to make 5 small equal parts between these numbers. Now can you show 23 on this scale? Golu quickly showed the number of black balloons, 23, by making a rectangle of height 3 small parts higher than 20. Chanda, I understood my mistake. From now on, before making a bar chart, I will decide the scale and only then start making the bar chart. Chanda and Golu made their own bar charts and with the help of that information, decorated Bhola's house with beautiful balloon patterns for his birthday. Children, in this video we saw some common mistakes related to bar charts. Hello children, in this video we will learn about the family tree. Raju's 10th birthday is coming. His parents have decided to celebrate his 10th birthday in a grand manner. They are making a list to invite all their relatives for Raju's birthday. Father, what are you doing? I am making a list of the names of all my relatives. So many people? What do I address them as? <laughs> they all have a different relationship with you, Raju. So you cannot address them only in one way. Let me explain to you. Raju's father started making his family tree in this way on a paper. What are you making, father? I am making our family tree. What's that, father? The family tree is a picture in which we depict all the relatives of our family. Look, Raju. First, I will write your name here. This is our first generation. Now, I will draw two lines above your name and write your mother's name and my name. We are both in the second generation of this family. Raju, now can you tell me what I need to do to create our third generation like this? Father, you have to draw two lines each above your and mother's names. You have to write maternal grandfather and grandmother's names on the two lines above mother's name. And on the two lines above your name, you will write paternal grandfather and grandmother's names. That's correct, Raju. Saying this, Raju's father wrote the names of Raju's paternal grandfather and grandmother and 
maternal grandfather and grandmother's names. Now our family tree is complete, isn't it father? No, Raju, we have yet to add more people to it. Look, for your maternal grandmother's parents, we will draw two lines in this way and write their names. Then we will draw two lines for your maternal grandfather's parents in this way and write their names. The names of your paternal grandfather and grandmother's parents will also be added to this family tree in the same way. What is my relationship with all these people, father? These are your maternal great-grandfather and great-grandmother. And these are your paternal great-grandfather and great-grandmother. This is our fourth generation. Oh wow! Now we have added all the people to this family tree. Right, father? No, Raju. There is yet another generation to be added. My maternal grandfather's grandparents and grandmother's grandparents and paternal grandfather's grandparents and grandmother's grandparents' names have to be added. Now Raju is thoroughly confused. That's correct, Raju. Let me quickly add them to our family tree. What shall I call them, father? These are your maternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother. And these are your paternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother. With this, our family tree is now complete. Come on, now help me call all of them up quickly. Raju's head started spinning just by the thought of it. <laughs> I was just kidding, Raju. You go play. I'll call them. Raju quickly ran to play and Raju's father started making calls to invite all his relatives. Children, in this video, we learned about the family tree. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned about the family tree. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. When Raju returned home after playing from the park, he saw the family tree made by his father on the sofa. So many people! Out of so many people, how many maternal great-great-grandfathers and great-great-grandmothers do I have? Children, can you find the solution to this question by looking at Raju's family tree? Raju's maternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother will be his mother's great-grandfather and great-grandmother. In this way, these are Raju's maternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother. Raju has a total of four maternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother. If I make my sixth generation, how many people will be there in it? Children, can you tell how many people will be there in Raju's sixth generation? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. To make Raju's sixth generation, we need to add the parents of his maternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother and parents of his paternal great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother to his family tree. In this way, there will be 32 people in Raju's sixth generation. How many great-grandfathers and great-grandmothers does my father have? Children, can you find the answer to Raju's this question? 
Raju's father's paternal great grandfather and great grandmother will be Raju's father's paternal grandfather's and grandmother's parents. In this way, Raju's father will have a total of four great grandfathers and great grandmothers. After adding this uh, sixth generation, how many people in total do I have now in my family tree? Children, can you find a solution to Raju's this question too? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. First, we will write down the number of people present in every generation. Then, to find out the total number of people in Raju's family tree, we only have to add the number of people from all these generations. In this way, Raju's family tree has a total of 63 people. Just then, Raju's doorbell rang. When Raju opened the door of the house, he saw that the relatives whom he had till now only seen in that family tree were now in front of his eyes and had come to celebrate his birthday. Children, in this video we learned more about the family tree through some interesting examples. Hello children, in this video we will learn approximation. The villagers in Champapur are cutting down many trees to build buildings. Due to this, the heat is increasing day by day in the village. Seeing this, Tufan decided that he would record the number of trees that have been cut every month for six months so that after six months, showing this information to the villagers could prevent them from cutting more trees. Tufan immediately took a piece of paper and drew a vertical line on it, depicting the number of trees cut down every month from the beginning. On this, he wrote numbers at a gap of half a centimeter from zero to 400 in increments of 50. He drew a horizontal line from each number. Then, in between every two numbers, he drew four small lines at equal distance. Now, at the horizontal line drawn at zero, he drew vertical lines at equal distance numbered 1, 2, 6 because he was going to count the number of trees that had been cut every month for 6 months. And finally, he drew 3 vertical lines at equal distance between the numbered vertical lines. A month passed and trees were still getting cut in the village. By the end of the month, he added the total number of trees cut down. Oh God! A total number of 40 trees were cut this month. Let me show this by making a dot like this on this paper. At the end of each month, Tufan counted the number of trees cut and recorded this on the paper. Six months have passed. This is a very serious problem. So many trees are cut every month. But in what month have the most trees been cut down? Children, by looking at this chart, can you tell? In which month the most trees have been cut? There is maximum difference between the dots of the second and third months. So, the maximum trees were cut in the 
third month. Hmm, how do I estimate the total number of trees cut down by the end of the third week of the fifth month? I will connect these points of the fourth and fifth months in a straight line. In this way, where the vertical line of the third week of the fifth month is meeting with this line, from that point I can approximate that in the fifth month how many trees will be cut in total by the end of the third week. Oh God, this point is at 270. By the end of the third week of the fifth month, a total of 270 trees were cut. I will quickly go and show this chart to the villagers. Tufan gathered all the villagers and showed them the chart. All the villagers understood what Tufan said and together decided not to cut any more trees. Children, in this video we learnt about approximation. In the next video, we will learn some more about it by some interesting examples. Hello children! In the last video, we learned about approximation. In this video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. Nowadays, all the children in Champapur are seen using the phone throughout the day. To rectify this problem, Barbole Batak uncle has made a unique idea. He told the children that he would record the average time spent on the phone by the children every 4 days. After 24 days, if there is any reduction in the time spent on the phone by the children, then they will take all the children on a trip. Uncle has made a chart for this. Uncle has shown the number of hours on the vertical line of the chart and the number of days on the horizontal line. Currently, children spend an average of 5 hours and 20 minutes on the phone every day. This is shown by the uncle making a point on the vertical line in this way. Now, uncle started recording the average time spent on the phone every fourth day on the chart in this way. Uncle recorded the time spent on the phone by the children for 24 days. 24 days are over. Uh, let me look at this chart to find out between which days the time spent on the phone by children has been cut the most. Children, can you find the answer to this question by looking at this chart? If you want, you can find a solution by stopping the video. The distance between the heights of the dots of 20 and 24th days is the highest. Hence, the most time spent on the phone by children between the 20 and 24th days, there is a cut of 1 hour and 30 minutes. Uh, approximately, how much time did the children spend on the 10th day on the phone? Can you find an answer to this question, children? In this way, we can find a solution by connecting the dots of the 8th and 12th days in a straight line. The vertical line on the 10th day is meeting this horizontal line at this dot, indicating about 3 hours and 40 minutes. So, the children must have spent about 3 hours and 40 minutes on the 10th day on the phone. How 
much time did the children spend on the phone between the fifth day and the eighth day? To find the answer to this uncle's question, first we have to approximate the time spent on the phone by the children on the fifth day. In this way, we can approximate it by connecting the dots of the fourth and eighth days with a straight line and then making a vertical line from the fifth day. The vertical line of the fifth day is meeting this line at 4 hours and 50 minutes. This means that on the fifth day, the children must have spent about 4 hours and 50 minutes on the phone. Now, to find the solution of uncle's question, we only have to subtract the number of time spent on the eighth day from the time spent on the fifth day. In this way, the time spent on the phone by children between the fifth day and the eighth day has been reduced by 30 minutes. Uncle is very happy that the children have now spent much less time on the phone and have started spending more time in other sports and studies. As promised to the children, Uncle took the children on a trip, seeing that the time spent on the phone has reduced. Children, in this video, we learned more about approximation by some interesting examples.